Hello, mates. Welcome back to Skyward Sword. In the last episode, we learned that Zelda was actually the goddess Hylia Reborn. And she upgraded our sword before casting herself into a deep slumber so that in the hope she did this in the hopes that she could maintain the seal on Demise, who we learned is the name of the imprisoned. The beast we fought twice now and sealed away. She's maintaining this hold so that when he returns in our time, he doesn't return at such a strength that we won't be able to face him. That's why we were able to beat him the last time. I, th I believe that's the reason why Groose, th that idea came upon Groose, that he should build the uh, Grusinator. Because he was he it was put upon him the f fact that we couldn't defeat the, the imprisoned again without his help and that's why we defeated it so um w with our new upgraded sword it charges skyward strikes faster and also they are now solid discs instead of swirlies and also they have a s crazy long range just look at that that's a that's range right there and if we do a spin tack it has a lot of range as well. So, we have a new sword. This, the last time, it was the Master Sword. Now you're probably wondering what this is. This is... The true Master Sword. This sword, blessed by the goddess herself, can only be wielded by the hero of legend. So, now that we know who she is, now that, and now that we know who we are, let's talk to Impa, but first... On a lighter note, I was I was just playing around because I noticed that this I don't know, it just this wall seems a little bit different in that you can just I ha, it looks like you can phase through it a little bit easier. So I was just trying things, seeing if maybe there's an easter egg where you could open it somehow, but there wasn't. And finally I tried the bomb jump where if you put a bomb straight down and backflip, you can jump higher. And it didn't work, so I rolled the bomb. Now, watch what Impa does. It's kind of cool, because you can tell that she's always at the ready. You know, even though she looks fairly lax. Well, as lax as a uh, Sheikah could look. It's, she's always at the ready. And also, man, she keeps her cool even, even with this. I wonder how hard that this blows. Anyway, let's talk to her. Impa. I see you. I've. I see you've said goodbye. Now you must keep the promise you made to her. You must find the Triforce. Return to your own time. There's work to be done there. Do not fear for Zelda. I will watch over her here. Go now and fulfill your destiny. Thank you, Impa. So there's nothing for us here. So let's go back into the present. This makes me wonder, are there other gates of time? Something I've kind of wondered ever since I played this game. Ah. So you've returned. Then you know everything. On the other side of that gate, Zelda awaits, suspended in a sleep without end. But do not despair. For she is still alive and well. True to legend, the Triforce is the one thing with the power to vanquish Demise. It is thought to have been hidden within Skyloft by the Goddess. Sadly, that is all we know of where it rests. All other clues to its whereabouts have been lost to the ages. Link, you have likely come to the same conclusion, but I will spell it out just the same because the person who is controlling your body is probably clueless, and they cannot tell anything, and they are really stupid. The key to finding the Triforce must be in Skyloft. Mm. Go now, Link. Find the Triforce. I'm giving you an Indian accent. Whoa, whoa there, hold up. Yes, Groose? Link, there's something I gotta tell you. Yeah, buddy? Does he look shorter? Is he shorter? 
I don't know. Maybe it's just the camera. So, Zelda. How's she holding up? Was she okay when you, when you saw her? Actually... That's terrible. It's got to be so hard for the poor girl. But you're... But you're going to do something about this mess, right? Link, I've made up my mind. I'm not going back. I'm staying right here with Granny. Ah, uh, don't look so bummed out. Do I look sad? Nah, I'm doing just what I want to do. I don't know how to explain it. I got this feeling in my belly that there's work to do here. Someone's got to watch that big, ugly monster, and someone's got to make sure Granny's doing all right. It ain't as action-packed as what you're what you're doing, but maybe this is my destiny. You know what I mean? Besides, it's not bad here. Living up in the sky was okay, I guess. But don't don't you just love the way it smells down here? What? That's not weird to say. <laughs> Check it out. Zelda and Granny have brought life back to the island here. I bet even the weakest sapling could grow into one beast of a tree in soil like this. It'd brighten this place up a bit, too. I mean, sure, it'd take a few years for it to grow, but as far as I'm concerned, I've got nothing but time. It's weird to say out loud, but that's just how I feel right now. So yeah, you know, when you get back to Skyloft, do me a favor and let people know I'm doing okay down here. Colin and Stritch might get a little emotional since they look up to me, but you can tell them I'm happy, okay? <sighs> Thanks, Link. See what I mean? Groose has come over a complete change, and I think it's... Ooh, bug. I think it's in part to Zelda. They, they say they brought... He says that Zelda and Granny have brought life back to this place, and... Maybe he's part of that life. Maybe some life has been brought to him. Maybe the atmosphere has rubbed off on him, which it has if you paid any attention to what I, what he was saying. So, I don't know. I just feel like Zelda's been... It's almost as if Zelda's been watching over us this whole time. Maybe she's the... It's not destiny. It's her changing things. I don't know. Okay, that's enough sad and serious talk. Let's get back to the meet and greet <laughs> of my episodes. And that is not making fun of the game, as l most LPers do, and praising it, even if I'm praising a bad mechanic, which sometimes I notice I do. Grusinator, I love you. Now, you can't tell if I'm praising a bad mechanic or I'm just praising the game. So, I'm going to try to make fun of the game more. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. Also, that bird just flew through the track, which is another thing I'm going to point out. But anyway, I'm going to try to make fun of the game more. Be I didn't mean to do that. Because people have told me I should do that more. Well, one. Anyway. So, let's go back to the sky, and... I have a feeling I know who we should ask. Let's talk to the, uh headmaster of the Knight Academy, Gibora, Zelda's father. One, we can tell her how she's doing because we know she's safe now. And two, we can ask him if he knows anything. I think that's the best course of action. I, I, that's, I just think that's the wisest thing. And we're not upgrading our equipment just yet because we still don't know where to go. So I'll keep my pocket full of medals for now. Besides, it's not like we're going to be doing much fighting here, so, you know, it's it's a nice break to not have a shield and have new stuff. And I have a question. I wonder if the Wii is powerful enough to process all of Skyloft without having to load like that. I mean, if you think about it, it only had to load for maybe, what was it, two seconds? Maybe two, three at most? I wonder what they should have done. Now, if anybody knows more about more about game programming, which pretty much anyone would, than me, 
feel free to correct me on this, but couldn't they do this? Couldn't they put a, like a circle, an invisible circle around Skyloft, right? Whenever you go inside that circle, the game, it's like a big radius. So whenever you go inside that radius, the game could start loading Skyloft. Then it would eliminate the need for a loading screen. I think that'd be... I think that'd work. I don't know, you can correct me in the comments. Ah, hello, Link. Have you heard anything more about my daughter? What is it? If you know anything at all, I urge you to share it with me. Through telepathy, we tell him what we... know. You want to tell me, but you can't. Hmm. I understand. I'm sure you have good reason for keeping quiet. Oh, I guess we didn't tell him. Okay. Link, I've been doing some thinking since we last spoke. You have had you've had this destiny thrust upon you without warning, or choice, for that matter. But I wish to help you as best I can. I'm getting older, and I lack the vigor of youth. But even old men have ways of being useful, too. I wish to share as much of my knowledge with you as I can. If you have any question, any question at all about Skyloft or its history, I would be glad to tell you all that I know. And I do! What do I know of the Triforce? Link, where did you hear that word? It's true that the ancient texts make several mentions of, mentions of the Triforce when, within their pages. Unfortunately, the actual location of the Triforce isn't illuminated in any of those tomes. Its whereabouts are lost to history. Oh, you can do better than that. S sorry, Link. It shames me to say it, but my knowledge is of little use on the subject. Okay, uh, let's go ask Alan, or Oramis, as I love to call him. Because he looks like Oramis from the Inheritance Cycle, at least how I picture him. Let's go. Link, just a moment. Uh, though, there is one whose vast knowledge may be of use. Oramis? Surely you're f familiar with Levius, the eighth colossi you have to defeat- I mean, sorry, the great sky spirit who has guarded our realm for ages. L Levius has served as the protector of our skies for a long time, and his knowledge of our world is encyclopedic, to put it mildly. If anyone in the entirety of Skyloft and beyond were to know about the Triforce, it would be him. Encyclopedic? Yes, his knowledge is almost limitless, but I fear meeting him may be harder than you anticipate. I imagine in your travels you've taken notice of the tremendous thunderhead that suddenly appeared in our skies. Not really suddenly, it's been here as long as I remember, but whatever. Recently, I've heard rumors suggesting that Levius is trapped inside that massive cloud. I asked Instructor Oramus, Instructor Oramus to look into this troubling cloud in order to determine if there's any truth in these rumors. I had meant to inquire about his findings earlier, but completely forgot about it after Zelda went missing. Instructor Oramus can fill me in on the details later, so why don't you go and speak with him yourself and see what his investigations have revealed? Okay. Which is coincidental, because I actually didn't... I was just saying that we should talk to Owl Owlin or Oramus and I didn't even know that we had to talk to him. Also, I love his room and I want it for myself. In fact, actually, I'm already starting be by the fact I have four cactuses in my in my room. Uh let's see what would be a good um good voice for him. Ah, oh, Link. How goes your search for Zelda? Have you found her yet? Really, I only have two accents. My English accent and my horrible American accent. That's it. And I need to learn more. Especially for a future LP I'm doing. <clears throat> what? Levius? Oh, so you have been so you've been talking to the headmaster, I take it. If I'm correct, Levius is the one inside the Thunderhead. But that's not the Levius that we all know. That's a monster. It certainly looks like Levius, but last time I approached him, he became rushing at me. He came rushing at me, and his eyes, they were full of malice. Another Colossi? People change, or old, wizened 
creatures change, rather. Perhaps it's more that he is possessed by something. That's how it felt to me. What? You want to talk to Levius? That's impossible. I don't think that Levius is cap capable of listening. Not in his current state, no. And even if you were to get close enough to talk to him, it would likely end with you being brushed aside and sent flying to your death in a sea of clouds. Actually, I have a port... Never mind. What? You're still planning on going? I see. It's because you need to find Zelda. I understand. I get the feeling that nothing I could say would... Hey, I have an idea. Come with me. Now, I mentioned very early on in this LP that there are no sword techniques. There aren't. And thus, the awesome sword music sword learning music is not in the game but there's there's a new technique we're gonna learn yep levius is inside the thunderhead he's been acting so strangely like something has possessed him if we can somehow free him from whatever it is that has a hold over him then there's a chance he can he will return to his senses listen well link because i'm about to teach you a very useful bird riding technique. Yes. It's called the spire. Actually, I said that the music wasn't in the game, but we heard it in the very first or second episode. So everything I just said was a lie. I'm sorry. It's called the spiral charge. Using the spiral charge, you can rid Levius of the blight that has hold of him. The technique is quite easy to perform. All you have to do is press A in the magical remote controller in your mind. However, the acceleration effect lasts longer than any attack move you've l used so far. Maintaining a stable flight can be tricky. This is a technique that only senior Knight Academy students have mastered. High level flight skills... Oh, sorry. This is a technique that only senior Ac Knight Academy students have mas who have mastered high level flight skills are allowed to perform. Sorry. It's still a little, a little bit too early on for you, but... This is an extraordinary circumstance, so I'll make an exception this time. However, I will test you. First, dive off this platform and call your bird. Okay. Dedicated to Chad again, and I did a roll there, but I did it too late. And this is not the same music, so... Actually, every single thing I said in that first thing was a lie, I'm sorry. I taught your loftwing to perform a spiral tr- How'd you do that? In like two seconds? In the map transition? Anyway, that's- that's strange. Press A to spiral charge and break the ten targets placed around the floating boulders up ahead. If you can destroy ten targets in under 120 seconds, I will recognize you as a skilled bird rider. Alright, off you go. Okay, so we have we just have to perform one every 12 seconds. So really, just press A. It's an extended boost, and it doesn't. I don't think it boosts your speed that much, but it it's very useful because now you don't have to time your attacks as uh, you don't have to time them as well. Come on. There we go. We're going really slow. Fly up. Fly up, Loftwing. I kind of... That's something I, I need to say. I wish that, that we had been able to name our Loftwing in the beginning. Because we just call it Loftwing. That just doesn't really make sense. You know, they did it in uh, in Twilight Princess. They enabled us to, ra to name our Loftwing. So why can't we do it here? I do not know. Okay, let's get this Gwei. Hit him. And we're doing fairly well. There's one in between. Ah, I missed. I missed. Oh, there's another one there. I think I'm doing pretty horribly. But it doesn't matter. They gave us 120 seconds, so... We don't have that many left. So it's pretty easy. Let's grab that one and then circle around. Where is he? Right there. Right there. No. Come on. We're, how are we going this slow? We're literally touching. Come on. 
Ah. Uh, come on, come on, come on. We have 20 seconds left. I didn't think it was going to go down to the clock. Okay. We have... Oh, snap. We have 15 seconds to get three of them. Yes. Oh, that was all? We had two left. Oh, I thought we had to get 12. Well, apparently, I need to stop making fun of the game because I missed the fact that we just needed 10. So we did it with, like, 9 seconds to spare. If you want to beat my time, try it. But it's not a mini game, so you're going to have to play through the entire game to do this. So don't bother. Oh, you managed to destroy 10 targets within the time limit. If you can control your bird that well, you'll have no problems at all. I knew you could do it, Link. And what a magnificent red bird. You are henceforth permitted to use the spiral charge attack as a qualified bird rider. Can we fly at night, please? The next thing we have to address is just how to go about finding Levius. Maybe the owner of the Lumpy Pumpkin might know something. Every year, year he makes an offering of his pumpkin soup for Levius. Go to the Lumpy Pumpkin and ask him what he knows. Okay, so let's go. That was a roll. There. Now, you probably... I mentioned Shadow Ganon or Ryan or Zaid, and you're probably wondering if he's going to appear on another pal's play. And yes, he is, but... And it is going to be fairly soon. Like, pretty soon, within maybe some episodes. <laughs> I don't know how many episodes, but he's going to be in, in it soon. So, yeah. I actually... I didn't really want to talk about this now because I didn't want to get your hopes up in case it didn't work out, but I we tried to get, get him over for episode 41 or 40. Whenever we did the Silent Realm, we intended to um, have him over, but I developed like a really bad pinched nerve in my... Oh, that's not the lumpy pumpkin. I developed a really bad pinched nerve in my neck. And it hurt. Like, I could not move my head right at all. That's not the Lumpy Pumpkin either. Oh, there it is. And it was really bad. Like, it hurt so bad. That was one of the worst pains I've ever felt. And so it happened on, like, Friday. He was going to come over Saturday. And, um, and then I texted him saying, I can't have you over, man. And he's like, well, good, because I have a cold. So it actually worked out really well. But we're arranging another time, so, when we can both not be sick. So yeah, you can expect him soon. And let's, this is all, um, we're going to f find Levius in this episode, so don't worry about that. I'm saying don't worry a lot, so I'll stop. You don't have to worry about that. I'm actually kind of turning into the paladin from episode one, which I think, actually, the reason for that is that Skyloft is rubbing off of me. It's bringing, bad, bringing up bad memories of the cutscene filled episodes. Also, is he... He's up there, okay. Um, we ha By the way, um, you want to visit this... Visit the Lumpy Pumpkin again after Leviasing because there are some stuff... There are two side quests that you can see if they're, they've been activated by coming here. So... After Levius, next episode, I'm going to start it off at the Lumpy Pumpkin. And we're going to see if those side quests have been activated. So, yeah. Okay. What do you have to say, Pum? What's the matter? You look like you've got some serious, uh, something mighty serious on your mind. Actually... Levius? What about him? Sure, I know Levius well. But I wasn't aware anything was wrong. Every year, I offer him an entire basin full of my pumpkin soup. But lately, a huge thunderhead has been brewing there. I haven't yet made this year's offer. I tell you, I feel horrible about it. You'll say, you say you'll deliver a pot of my soup to Levius? Huh. I don't know how you plan to fly through that huge thunderhead brewing out there, but... If that's the case, I'm going to do everything I can to make Levius the best batch of soup ever. You wait right here. I'm getting inspired to fire up some soup like I've never souped before. And for his voice, for those LPers who want to practice off of me, 
I am literally putting my fingers on my lips and moving them around so it simulates the effect of a beard. Voila, here it is. I've been cooking this stuff for well for well over 10 years. I have to say this is the best batch of pumpkin soup I've ever created. <laughs> He's looking at her. He's just like, whoa, what are you? <laughs> Master, I will signal for, signal for the robot. Thank you, Fee. Look at him, look at her. And look at him, he's like, Huh? I'll just clean this plate. I've cleaned a hole through it. Miss Fee, I'm here. Bzzzr. Hey, Scrapper, buddy! I'm a sacred hero, so like, I've leveled up. Oh, this is another heavy load. But don't worry, I can carry anything! Hmm. I want to test that theory out later. I'll be waiting outside. I can take you wherever you need to go as soon as soon as you're ready. Zzzat! <laughs> Pum is just watching him like, I've n In all my born days, I've never seen such a sight. Pum has to say... The place where I offer soup to Levius insi is inside that thunderhead cloud, on, on an island with an everlasting rainbow. Oh, you'll know it when you see it. Good luck. So, we know that island. We've seen it multiple times. At least three times. So, let's go there. Uh, I won't cut. But, yeah, I won't cut. Now, I have, I have a little thing to say. Notice how Pum, okay, how else would he have brought that big, big batch of pumpkin soup to Levius each year? And let me place a beacon here and we have many things to get so we'll get those next episode probably maybe well yeah we will so anyway pum how could he have brought that big batch of pumpkin soup over to levius either one he had maybe like three or four loft wings um strap themselves to this big pot of soup which i don't know it seems likely it seems like that could be done or, this is kind of like, this is the theory, this is the reason, the explanation I like to think. Or, you know, it's an offering to Levius. So, here's my theory. As kind of a sign of dedication, he delivered that pot there, empty, using his one loft wing, to the island. And then, what he did is, this is my theory, is he delivered all of the soup to that pot individually so he would bring it like in in jars or bottles uh, and he'd make like maybe 50 trips that is dedication if he did it that way I mean alternatively he could have actually made the soup there but I don't really think that's a that's going to be that theory goes because if you look at the island there's no fire pit on it there's nothing it's empty so, my theory is, is that he brought the servings to it in multiple trips, which is actually, that's a lot of dedication, especially because, where's Scrapper? Okay, there you go. Um, especially because they do not worship Levius. Levius is just like some scholar. He's, whatever he is, he's just like a scholar. That's what they said he is. So, for him to bring that many, that many, um, for him to do that amount of effort it's just amazing i'm really impressed with that so anyway we've delivered the soup here in the island with the everlasting rainbow and i'm unloading this con this cargo of pumpkin soup here you picked an odd place for a soup delivery feels dangerous something could jump out at us at any moment hungry for soup or robot yeah. I don't want to fathom what robot tastes like. I'm out of here. See you around, Zer. I like Scrapper. He he's a good he's a he's kind of cute. So anyway, Levius smells the soup and oh my land <laughs> That's a Colossus. If I've ever seen one. With tentacles. Also, this music matches Shadow of the Colossus very well. 
Seriously, this is like straight up Shadow of the Colossus. He even has the eyes. Great Spirit of the Skies, Levius. Which is also a name of, Col of a Colossus. Also, this is a cool guy. Look at this. This is cool. Look at him. Actually, we're touching him. This is cool. Like, that's really, really neat. I love this boss fight. And yes, this is the first episode where we've done two boss fights in a row. And actually, well, I'll talk about this later, but the game does not count this as a boss fight. Strange as it sounds, it doesn't. Also, those worm guys, which, that we just killed, um, I'll put the name of them on screen right now. <coughs> we could only kill them with our normal attack, air attack, um, before if we hit them in the tail. Now we can do it whenever, <coughs> whenever. So we got to step up. So what you want to do, it, and also this is the first boss battle we've had where it's ta taking place in the air. What you want to do is you want to charge. Come on. Let's go and... Whoa. Um... I didn't know that was a thing, but okay. Let's run back down. So, anyway, you, what you want to do is you t want to take out the, the eyes on the s coming out of its the orifices. You want to take them out with a a spin attack with your bird. Now he he is very slow. He's very slow moving, but he's he, we're actually going fairly fast. It's hard to keep up with him. So, and if he moves, what you want to do is I suggest jumping off of your bird. I'm actually going to do it now. Say if you're ahead of him, instead of circling around, this is a very good strategy. Jump off your bird and immediately call it again. Actually, that gives you a speed boost, so yeah. Come on, where's the eye? Okay. Where's the eye? There it is. There we go. Dive. Ah, missed it. Come on. We're almost hitting it. Come on. Let's hit it. There we go. Okay, there's the eye. And out of it, the opening on its head, the, um, the blowhole will appear the actual... Parasite. Ow. So, what we have to do now is we cannot defeat it by spin tacking into it. I'll show you. It, it doesn't work. Watch. Come at it, and it's wise enough to retreat back into Levius. So what you have to do is dive off and land on Levius. He will not shake you off, so you don't have to worry. And here's the actual boss. His name is... Ocular Parasite. Bilocyte. Uh, uh, now, he, before we get this, this started, let's have Fee bio him. Target lock. Bilocyte. This species of parasite is currently attached to Levius. He is, it is known for its normal optical structure. I'll say. This horrifying life form utterly controls the mind and body of its host. Tell me more. Okay, she has no more information. When our sword flashes, we'll, buy her, we'll have her say something again. Now, before we get actually fighting him, there's a very, very weird glitch that occurs with this boss. I'll show you. What you want to do, it's as easy as this. What you do is you take out the gust bellows and you gust him. Look at that. What is going on? My guess is that they never programmed a response for when you use the gust bellows on him, and thus when you look, see how he turns toward us wherever we move without actually having really a move animation. My theory is that he's actually going back to his um, I, I don't know what to call it, his design, uh, his de design animation. It's sort of like how characters would be in the T formation. This is this guy's in his T formation. And also, that weird noise that plays is just really creepy, and I'll stop. So, you can... I don't think you can exploit 
that glitch for anything. So what you want to do is he's shooting acid at us. So what you want to do is hit it to his flaps. And the acid will destroy them. So you want to do that. And also, this boss almost looks like a puppy. It's, I think he looks like a puppy. Like a cute puppy. Which isn't very menacing at all. So we just have... But he is... He's not that hard, but he is pretty hard. So you, you want to hit him, and you just have to play a couple ra rounds of Dead Man's Volley, and it's pretty easy. So let's so let's kill his flaps again. Let's try hitting him with our new Skyward Strike. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try it again. There we go. Hit him. It did nothing. Okay, well, whatever. Let's go ahead and hit him with his acids again. Ow. Now, come on. Hit it. And that'll deal with his left flap. Or his port flap. Hit that. That'll deal with his starboard flap. And let's hit his, his eye. Take out his vision. And let's hit him again. Ow. Come on, charge up Scarred Strike. Come on, come on. Hit him! And is that it? No, it's not. If you think about it, he's the most powerful boss we've faced. Because he's taken two rounds from our fully powered True Master Sword with a Skyward Strike charge, and he's still alive. So anyway, here his, is his mini phase. You stab this. Oh, never mind. Oh, you, okay, it is a mini phase. He will now move around. So you now have to hit him three times with his own acid. Where we'll move to the right, to the starboard side. And he takes four, apparently. Hit him. Is that it? No, it's n not. I have a feeling that I'm doing something wrong. Ow. Time that wrong. I, I have a feeling that I'm doing something. Never mind. We took him out. Somehow. I thought it was going to end with a sword slash, but no, we took him out. And we freed Levius of... The blight that was blighting him. And apparently that that looks like it, it killed him, and we're on, we're on top of him. So we're going beneath the clouds, it looks like. What area will we bring us to? Actually, never mind. It looks like he is one of the... I had... I spoiled. Well, I'm muting... I'm muting that out, because that was spoilers. I'm sorry. Tell me, boy. Was it you that brought me this most delectable cauldron of pumpkin soup? I must apologize for my earlier behavior. A most peculiar peculiar, and irksome pest possessed me. I was not myself. But that business is done now. The delicious aroma of that soup has restored me to my senses. I am the great spirit they call Levius. Before she passed from this world so long ago, the goddess, Hylia, appointed me as warden of the skies. And what do they call you, boy? Ah, Link, is it? A rather pleasing name, that. Your parents clearly have excellent taste in names. Hmm. You carry a curious sword, boy. And I sense a silent power dwelling somewhere within that little frame. Ah, I see it now, Link. You are the goddess's chosen hero. How interesting. I assume you've come to hear what I know of the Triforce. You know? Do I know? You do realize you're talking to the Great Sky Spirit, do you not? Bah. No matter. As I sus suspected, listen closely and I will tell you. As you likely know, long ago an evil force attempted to take the Triforce for his own. 
The goddess did everything in her power to prevent it from falling into his hands. For the safety of all things, she hid the Triforce somewhere within the rock you call Skyloft. However, its location has been kept secret. Even I do not know where it rests now. Oh, but the goddess didn't trust me with the hint to the, as to the Triforce's location. The clue is a song, meant to be played on the harp you now hold. It is known as the Song of the Hero. The song is the key to opening the secret location of the Triforce. The goddess split the song into four parts. She entrusted one part to me, and the other three to the dragons of the land. You must gather each of the parts of the Song of the Hero. Seek out the dragons and convince them to teach you their parts. When they have taught you what they know, come to me and I will complete the song with my own voice. The dragons can be found at Faron Woods, Elden Volcano, and Laneru Desert. Go on then, find the dragons you now seek. So, actually, I I didn't have to mute that because, also, this is kind of making me sick. This is actually making me sick. I'm gonna, I want to end the episode, but okay, I'll I'll stand it. Ugh, gross. Anyway, uh, so I didn't have to mute that part because it was only spoilers for one minute. So we're gonna go to Faron Woods first. I think that that is the best way, cause you know it it's it's fitting. But first, next episode, we're going to do any side quests that we have. I believe we have two, possibly three, but three is the max. It cannot be four. I know this for a fact. So it's either two or three. I already know of one. It's already been activated. I just haven't told you guys because it hasn't been relevant yet. We haven't had to deal with that. So. Uh, so anyway, it's we'll do those side quests next episode. And first, I believe, are we moving? Wait, are we moving? This is still making me sick. I don't. Yeah, we are. Okay, watch. The bomb. No, it didn't do it. Well, I believe if you move faster, it will actually like. If you jump off them and jump back on, then it'll do stuff. But anyway, next episode. We'll do side quests, and eventually, we will get the Song of the Hero. This game is almost coming to a close. We can see it now. But anyway, next episode will not be a long episode unless it's Saturday, which I don't know. If it is, then it'll be a little shorter than this. But anyway, I'll see you next time for another Pal Plays Skyward Sword. Uh, let me get off you. Ugh, gross. Make it.